technologies group of businesses that began its journey in a garage and now has a market valuation in excess of rupees 3 lakh crore rupees dr ajay choudhury had his education in electronics and telecommunication engineering from jabalpur engineering college and the university of michigan us later one reed hoffman the founder of linkedin recently used a metaphor that starting a company is like jumping off a cliff and building an airplane on the way down that explains how difficult it is today to start and grow a new business but situation was very different when these six young boys were dreaming to revolutionize an empty landscape into a vibrant digital economy in an era characterized as license raj and controlled regime they broke innumerable barriers undaunted by challenges and undeterred by setbacks and gave our nation the early personal computers we talk about ecosystem today but there was nothing then except restrictions but the team was innovative and to find to find their way forward they could secure something like venture capital funding to start a joint sector company with government body such as up electronics corporation there was no venture funding company companies in those days when apple gave the world a personal computer for the first time almost concurrently acl started marketing personal computers in india and soon in hong kong in singapore and even in us under the able leadership of dr choudhury acl saw phenomenal growth and emerged as the most trusted indian it brand that was selected by economic times in 2010-11 dr choudhury and team laid the foundation of indian it revolution the world class it companies that we are proud today to have would not have been possible without the foundations that was that were laid by them thanks to them the country has emerged as the proud it superpower of the world creating huge wealth for the nation jobs for our educated youth amassing huge foreign exchange reserves and that transformed our own it infrastructure into global class world class it infrastructure the present economic growth is squarely attributable to the unflinching courage and determination of this team to be successful dr choudhury the son son of an ias officer has always rooted to the masses of our nation and has been driving a vision of it for the masses he has been promoting entrepreneurship as the chairman of the electronic sector skill council and chairman of fiki startup committee he has been heading many national level initiatives to further the entrepreneurial ecosystem particularly in reaching the benefit of the digital revolution to the masses dr choudhury has been enlisted among india's most powerful brand builders and has been adjudged among india inc's most powerful ceos by the economic times he is also in the board of indian angel network and has invested in many startups he is also on the investment committee of ian ian fund and edf fund as a recognition of his value invaluable contribution to the digital transformation he has been conferred with a prestigious padma bhushan the data quest it person of the year 2007 electronics man of the year by cnbc asia business award 2010 the india innovator of the year award by the honorable finance minister sri Pr- late pranab mukherjee in 2010 the cyber media business ict award 2013 a lifetime achievement in ict by sri narendra modi in january 2014 he has been awarded honoris causa that is dsc by the indian institute of information technology design and manufacturing jabalpur in recognition of the significant contribution he has made to the indian it industry and thought leadership in the field he was nominated by the honorable president of india to be the chairman of iit hyderabad and then the chairman of iit patna he has been appointed as the chairman of iiit naya raipur his achievements and the various initiatives and leadership roles he played would make a complete book we have so much to take inspirations from him to set our own journey moving forward without taking any more time i'd 
like to request Dr. Chaudhary to please begin his talk. Thank you so much. Well, welcome, Dr. Chaudhary. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be among students in uh, IIT Kharagpur. And uh, I look back at uh, when we started HCL. Uh, Arjun Malhotra came from, one of my co-founders, Arjun Malhotra, came from IIT Kharagpur. So IIT Kharagpur has always had a very, very special place in the minds of everybody in HCL. And uh, so uh, let me sort of uh, talk about uh, certain opportunities that are there today for entrepreneurs who come from various engineering backgrounds, etc. And uh, what I thought was that today I will give you some view in terms of where the world is going in terms of technologies. And somewhere I will also talk about uh, uh, looking at existing technologies and where are the opportunities in India for startups. So let me begin by saying that uh, 66 million years ago, uh, there was an asteroid that struck the earth. And animals like uh, dinosaurs could not adapt and got killed. COVID has arrived as another asteroid now and a large number of companies will not survive if they do not adapt and change ai technology will be another asteroid that has the power to reset the whole world and india has to embrace it and i think most organizations and managements will have to think about ai very seriously uh, if you don't understand AI and data analytics, you really cannot run any business anymore. And really, uh, it's pretty much like what happened when Internet snuck up and advertising and entertainment industry were not awake and were clueless. If we look at the most valuable companies in the world today, seven out of ten are technology companies. In India also, four out of top 10 companies are technology or technology enabled companies. So what should we look forward to when deciding on startups that will make the grade? And this has to have great linkage to our strengths as a country. And also we should look at creating a global market. So let me start with my area, which is where I started my life in college, which is electronics and telecom, and especially electronics. Uh, and if we look at electronics today, uh, it is really a meta resource. Fundamentally, electronics is everywhere. You think of automobiles, you think of med tech, you think of televisions, any product that you can think of. There is not a single product that does not have electronics. Now, given the current uh, geopolitical situation, uh, looking at the way China has, uh, you know, acted on our borders, it's very important that we as a country start to look at being more resilient and more self-reliant. And the Prime Minister's call for Atman Nirbhar, I think, is very timely. So a lot of new things are happening in electronics. So uh, I've been part of this journey for more than 40 years. And uh, I have been part of many government committees to suggest what we should do. And I'm still involved in uh, some of them. And uh, our thinking has been that instead of just importing every component from different parts of the world, we should be making a lot of those components, including semiconductors. And why semiconductors? A lot of times this question is asked uh, in the country. Why we should, why do we need to have semiconductors? And I would like to quote Senator Ben Sasse of uh, the Intelligence Committee of the US, who said, modern wars are fought with semiconductors. So there is a lot of opportunity that is coming up today for startups to look at electronics from 
semiconductors to full systems. And uh, there is huge amount of import taking place today in the country of simple products like set-top boxes, CCTV cameras, uh, everything that you think of in, in, a, in a laptop or, a, or any of the large screen products, everything is being imported, pretty much 80-90%. So therefore, there is an opportunity to create products in India for India and do it from chip to system. And therefore, there is a lot of incentives that are being made available in India by the government to help people do this. And you will see a large package being announced soon enough for even fabless companies. Fabless fundamentally means that you actually design the design a chip in India and get it manufactured anywhere in the world. But fabless companies have mainly been in large companies, fabulous pieces have been largely in large companies like HCL. But we need to go forward and we need to have many, many small companies working on designing chips in India. And they should also be designing chips in India for Indian requirements. So therefore, there is a very large opportunity for startups to look at today that they should look at how to design chips and how to look at designing a full system creating a Indian set-top box, creating all kinds of Indian products, and reduce our dependence on China. So I think there is that nice opportunity in, in my area, which I've been very familiar with. Let's take to the next area. The next area that I feel which will be very uh, interesting for startups would be in the area of what, what is called the fintech stack or the India stack. Okay, the India stack was something that has been created based on the original plan to create the UID, the Aadhaar. And from Aadhaar, they led to a complete India stack, which was then called uh, India stack. And also many payment uh, systems uh, emerged from it also. So UPI today is a very major payment system and they are talking today about achieving 1 billion transactions per day on UPI. So this has really, really taken off in the country. And what has happened around that, that people are going to be provided credit based on, uh, for, based on this kind of a uh, setup. And a new network called OCEN which is called the Open Credit Enablement Network, this will democratize credit. Today, you stand in line at a bank and you're waiting to get credit. <coughs> I think uh, what you will see with this tag and OCEN, that many, many startups will be able to utilize UPI, OCEN, and all these opportunities to make products in India. And a lot of startups have already started to do that, but more and more startups will, will have an opportunity to participate in this whole area of what is called fintech. There's huge opportunities. It's just a question of where your imagination takes you. Okay. So India, interestingly, if you look at, is far ahead of the rest of the world in all the stacks that have been developed in the, in the country. The, the first stack was the India stack, then the next stack was the payment stack. And the third one that is coming up is called the health stack. This health stack is something that is a uh, work in progress, but this is also uh, going to happen in the country. And why is this critical? Because we really do not know what is the background of each patient in the country, each human being, what is their medical record, what is their background. So all of this is going to get integrated into a health stack. And this health stack will enable anyone in the country to be able to have health records of people very securely. And also you will be able to create uh, software and products around this. And 
this bharat health stack will become the uh, platform that aims to offer multiple uh, medical services and i think this will boost research this will boost connectivity and this will also bring health to health services to be much cheaper for every person in the country right down to every village and <clears throat> utilizing this huge amount of telemedicine and all other solutions are emerging and more and more products and solutions will come up so i think that is going to be a very very large opportunity and as i said interestingly we are far ahead of the rest of the world in creating this now if we look at the newer areas that are opening up in the country now let us look at space now space tech is i believe going to be a very very interesting area india has been in the forefront of space exploration what with the isro being very very successful in 2008 if you recall india arrived seriously on the scene with a lunar probe called chandrayaan <coughs> and chandrayaan actually discovered water on the moon this was followed up by the mars orbiter mission called the mangalyaan but everything started to change in the world in the space technology when elon musk introduced space x where they were using vertical takeoff and landing and reusable rockets bezos also came up with blue origin and space x created whole bunch of newer opportunities for people to travel to these different planets as a matter of fact they are making bookings even now for the next 3 4 years to take people to the moon and take people to mars much later and india itself has a lot of technology that was developed indigenously in in the space program for example if you look at the pslv 37 it launched 104 satellites into space so as per the government's new thinking what has happened is that the government has opened up space for and geospatial data and testing facilities for startups are now available this will enable startups to work on space projects at a very cheap price and isro is inviting startups to develop food and medicines for astronauts better tools to access machines in an air, in a spacecraft and green engines for the gaganyaan space tech by the way is a 380 billion industry today and is expected to grow to a trillion in the next two decades now this is by isro opening up the space area it is democratized space tech for india investors are now talking about space tech having much more potential than the internet massive value can be unlocked in space tech stacks such as gps uh, communications geospatial intelligence analysis distribution and management of data collected by existing space based infra and space based operation just gps alone has generated trillions of dollars of economic value worldwide now one of the most interesting parts of space for india has been the way we have actually used frugal innovation our cost has been whole lot lower than nasa so if if we don't look too far it is believed that the momentum that has been created can unleash a wave of disruption that can go far beyond the space sector itself many innovations by the way happen due to space technology for example wireless headsets camera phones cat scans electrolytic uh, water purifiers all of these happen due to the apollo mission in the us in india lot of interesting things are happening 
Bharti has invested in a company called OneWeb. And we can see democratization of internet through that. They are going to have low-lying satellites that will deliver internet in India all over the country, despite, instead of having to use fab, uh, uh, fiber all over the country. <coughs> Startups are appearing in the space. Excuse me, sir, you were muted. You were muted. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, I'm okay now? Right, sir. Yeah, startups, uh, for example, it started with Team Indus in India who wanted to participate in the Lunar X Prize by putting a rover on the moon. As a matter of fact, I personally invested in that company. And you can see names like Kawa, uh, Pixel, Agnikool, Bellatrix, all these companies in India are startups working on uh, very interesting opportunities that they have seen. And one of the most interesting areas that is emerging is space, space as a service. Just like the way you say software as a service, space as a service is emerging as another area. So we have a lot of such things happening which are so interesting and so so much opportunity is there. So let me talk about uh, some other very interesting opportunities that have happened due to what I said was the asteroid that has hit India, which is COVID. The last one year has created many challenges for India and the world. What has become a reality that COVID is here to stay for a long time, unfortunately. Many variants and multiple waves are coming. We may end up having uh, COVID as an endemic, where we may need to get a jab every year. So fundamentally, it's just going to be like the common flu. We will need to uh, be prepared to handle COVID. So many of our habits have changed. We are now in a totally new world. And this world is a world of masks and dis social distancing, etc., etc. <clears throat> but each challenge, and you will notice this, this has happened many times in the past, each challenge creates opportunities. And the human minds actually creates absolutely new solutions. So the whole idea of, uh, for example, work from home, work from anywhere is taking root. People, we are not going to go back to where we were pre-COVID. A lot of people will actually work from home. What does this really mean to the world? It basically means lower cost of to enterprises, reduction in daily and unnecessary travel, and major impact on our carbon footprint as a result, which is a huge positive. So work from home solutions have to be devised. And there are a lot of opportunities there also. For example, if you look at, you should have tools for managing time of executives and coders at home. So people would like to know from their main server and main facility in the office, how are people actually working at home? Are they utilizing the time fully or they are moving around and not doing enough work? You need to manage them because they are far away. So you need tools to do that. Similarly, since security has become a very big issue, cyber security, you need to have cyber security at every station at home, which is connected to the enterprise. So there's a new concept that is emerging, which is called mesh security where you actually make sure that each and every human being in the mesh is absolutely secure. So lots of tools could be required for this. And similarly, you will need, since this will go into a very large number globally, you need low cost hardware for home internet. So all kinds of hardware and software that is required to run internet 
and devices at home have to be created and we have to look at newer ways of doing these things. Interestingly, as a result of people working from anywhere, people working from home, technologies like uh, uh, VR and AR, virtual reality and augmented reality are becoming very critical. As a matter of fact, one of the startups that we have invested in called Trezzy has actually created a collaborative tool using AR and VR for making architects work together in teams sitting anywhere in the world. So that is really where newer opportunities are coming up and startups are seeing such opportunities and grabbing them. Now, those who want to continue to come to work for, to the office, newer businesses have emerged, bigger and bigger. One of them is office sanitization services. I couldn't have thought of something like this before, but these are new services that have emerged. And therefore, these are all solutions that startups are creating. People have created newer devices for sanitization. As a matter of fact, one of the startups that I'm working with has created a COVID attenuation device. That is, if you put it in a room of a thousand square feet, it actually attenuates COVID. So if you have 20 people sitting in a classroom and two people have COVID, the other 18 will not get COVID. So these are the kind of innovations that are happening due to this new asteroid called COVID. The biggest change has been in the education industry. With uh, schools and colleges closed, there are many new opportunities. And of course, what is happening is things like online tutoring, online assessment and online exams and tools for those or online webinars. And interestingly, one of my startups, which I work with, has created <coughs> a solution for how to get children to spend their time valuably at home. And this is a company called FSM Buddy. What have they done? They've looked at this opportunity and they said, all parents are complaining today that these children are sitting at home. How much can we do in terms of online teaching? So they get fed up and they need some way of doing something different and learning something different. So this company came up with the whole idea of creating online courses to teach extracurricular things like music, dance, art, craft, life skills. So today, this company is becoming very successful because they have created something which had never existed before. And all of this has happened because of COVID. Now, due to COVID also, if we look, the health and wellness industry is completely changing. And telemedicine is taking health services all over India and the world, it is also creating opportunities for startups to look at creating devices, med tech devices at home. And these are called point of care products. So if you can create a ventilator for home, you can create an oxygen concentrator for home, you can create a def defibrillator at home, all these products are not existing today. <coughs> Most of these products are very, very expensive. So we need to actually come up with solutions for this. As a matter of fact, uh, during COVID, uh, we set up a task force from IIT Kanpur and I worked with IIT Kanpur students to create a ventilator in 90 days flat. That was, of course, an ICU ventilator. But what I'm talking about is point of care products and a whole bunch of other medical products that can be kept at home. And in addition, newer services have emerged, which are called point of care services. And one of them happens to be an ex-HCL person who created a company called Portia that delivers ICU services at home. 
because of covid a lot of people could not go to hospitals for their other diseases some of them needed chemotherapy at home for cancer now they were very scared to go to the hospital for this so they all got serviced by this organization called portia so it's all about cre- looking at the opportunity seizing that opportunity and using your imagination to create solutions which are required so fundamentally what does a startup do a startup basically looks at a problem in a completely new way and devises a solution so every problem is where it all starts for startups so now let's look at uh, another nice opportunity that emerged last year which was online delivery of medicines again using a lot of technology this has taken off as a matter of fact there is a little company that i am looking at for investing called true meds what they have done is that they have actually gone and done a deal with medical companies for equivalent products and they can reduce the total medicine bill of everybody by 50 to 70% and using very good products so that's where it it is all happening newer and newer ways of uh, looking at the opportunity that has got presented due to covid and of course e-commerce and food delivery has taken off in a huge way people are delivering homemade food people are looking at e-commerce in a totally new way and digitalization of delivery process to kiranas and aggregators and stockists has taken off so there are many many companies like this like max wholesale ulan which have actually come up in the last couple of years and lot of people are now working on e enabling kiranas using mobiles so again it's all a question of a problem a situation and an environment which has created an opportunity for a startup to look at this the problem in a very different and unique way now entertainment is a major area where changes took place last year if you look at what happened to cinemas being closed and somewhere being partially open even today social distancing and all of this created issues for the entertainment industry and therefore lot of newer companies came up to create interesting content for people like amazon hotstar netflix etc and newer channels came up also and interestingly now a lot of people are looking at gaming channels gaming software gaming hardware as a matter of fact recently one of the gaming software companies called nazara went for a ipo in the last 3 days and it was a extremely successful ipo so what are you really seeing you're seeing that entertainment is being delivered in a totally different way than what was happening pre covid and a lot of these changes that have happened due to covid are likely to carry on uh, and create a completely new uh, area to succeed so i think there's a huge opportunity that has been created and i would like you to now take you to some of the other newer areas that are emerging and again these are areas that are emerging due to a problem and as i said a startup looks at a problem and finds an innovative solution sometimes startups look at what has happened in another country and then innovate and make it suitable for india which is what pretty much uh flipkart did when they copied amazon they took the whole strategy of amazon brought it to india but then added a new indian innovation to it which all of you know which is cash on delivery so let's look at uh, mobility it's a very favorite subject of mine because i believe that the biggest uh change is happening in how we move around the country 
how we move around the world. And mobility is going to uh, be all pervasive in terms of what is needed today. We've had enough of the fuel-based products like cars. I think the time has come in a very big way to come with alternates. And therefore, the complete revolution of electric mobility has happened. And it is happening in a very big way. And there are lots and lots of opportunities coming up today for startups. So as a matter of fact, there are close to five to eight startups in India who created electric products, both two-wheelers and three-wheelers. And it is not going to just stay here. I think it's all going to go much more fast forward. So where is it going to go? The way I see it is that our streets are still very, very crowded. So if the streets are so crowded, then even if you are traveling in an Uber or an Ola or in a, in a Rapido, which uses three-wheelers and two-wheelers for moving you around, it's still not solving the problem. It has solved one problem, which is it's available when you need, and it is cheaper than what it was earlier. And it's cleaner and better. But the situation of crowded streets has not gone away. And therefore, both Uber and Ola are currently experimenting with creating flying cars. As a matter of fact, the thought is that flying cars will be created by many of startups in America. As a matter of fact, Uber is testing some of these products today. Ola, I believe, is also looking at flying cars. And I have a startup whom I have seen who has created a flying car already in India. So I think this is going to be a huge, huge change because flying cars will not just solve one problem. They will also create a completely new problem. Where to park these? What kind of locations are required? Do you have to have stations for flying cars just the way you have stations for trains or you have aerodromes for aircraft? So again, there'll be a huge change that will take place in the whole environment around the flying car. Therefore, this is going to be a very interesting opportunity for uh, startups to look at. Now, one of the biggest challenges that has come around is that when you have an electric car, you also need electricity to charge it and you need battery technology. Both these are resulting in a negative situation in terms of carbon footprint because the electricity in a country is hugely created from coal. So if you're going to use coal to create electricity, which then powers an electric vehicle, which is supposed to be carbon neutral, it cannot be carbon neutral. So we need to do something about what, how do we produce electricity that charges these cars and how do we create batteries that are also can be carbon plus and I would say totally green. So battery technology is where there is a huge opportunity and I do remember IIT Kanpur has created an alternative to a lithium ion battery. We need more and more research to be done on this in India. And we need to create Indian solutions, which can be absolutely unique. Again, when you look at the lithium ion battery, the challenge that you face is that the lithium that you import, a majority of that is available only in China. So, you know, this is where the issues are. And we need to look at an Atman Nirbharta here also. Let's go on to a very interesting subject where there's a lot of work that has happened in the last 10, 15 years. And you're finally seeing the result of research done in this area, and which is quantum computing. Quantum computing is something that is becoming more and more uh, 
needed by many, many governments. And as a matter of fact, many large companies like Google have created their own quantum computers. China today is operating a few uh, quantum computers also, and the US and everybody, a lot of organ, uh, world, a uh, lot of com uh, sort of lot of countries are actually participating in this new revolution of quantum computing. So as quantum computing arrives, and China has a quantum computer, and if they use quantum technology, they can break any cybersecurity capability in the country. They can break into electric grids. They can break into our financial systems. They can break into our stock exchange and they can bring they can bring us down on our knees. So what do we need to do? So therefore, a newer area that has emerged and that is called quantum uh, cybersecurity. Interestingly, there is a company that has been born out of research done in IIT Madras called QNU, and they have created a quantum cybersecurity product. So I think there will be many companies in the world that will start to look at quantum computing and quantum cybersecurity, and all of this is going to happen in the next one, two, one, two, four years. I think that is when quantum computing will arrive on the scene in a reasonable big way. Now let's look at the impact of something that is going to happen in India soon enough, which is the launch of 5G. The launch of 5G will generate tremendous opportunities for startups because the speed at which communications will happen will be phenomenally better than what is available on 4G. And within 5G also, there are huge opportunities that will be there for creating hardware and software products. As a matter of fact, I've been looking at a startup that has created an alternative, radio-based alternative to fiber that can connect cars or telecom companies wherever they can't use fiber. Fiber is required, but you want to go to locations where fire fiber cannot be used or fiber becomes very expensive to use, then radio becomes a very interesting opportunity. So therefore, 5G itself is creating huge opportunities for startups to look at software products, hardware products, and solutions. I'm sure a lot of you have been looking at what's happened to drones. Again, India has been taken a leadership position on drones. There is a proper drone policy in the country. There is a proper drone software that's been developed to manage drones in the country. And something like a drone stack has also been developed. So drones are becoming huge opportunities. Many IIT students all over the country have created different kinds of drones. Some drones are meant for specific purposes. Excuse me. Some drones are created for specific purposes like the military, the defense, uh, uh, some of them for um, uh, government requirements, policing, etc., etc. And some drones are required for very simple day-to-day -day requirements, like photography. Okay, so that is that is where China has taken a huge leadership position. There's just one company in China that has a drone that is pretty much available at a very low price of thousand to two thousand dollars. And as a result, that company now owns 70% of the world market in drones for phone usage, for usage of photographers. So interestingly, there are so many people working on this today to create a low-cost drone solution for competing with this Chinese company. And before I end, 
I would like to mention that one area which I have been personally following up, following on is this whole issue of Industry 4.0. What is Industry 4.0? Industry 4.0 is the newer way that you do manufacturing. And in India, a lot of manufacturing is going to move to India because newer and newer incentives have been made available by the current government for people to manufacture in India and make India a manufacturing hub. So Industry 4.0 <coughs> is likely to take a very prominent position in the country and it would be good for all of you to look at Industry 4.0 and see where you can fill in the holes as an opportunity if you want to create something totally new for Indian requirements. So this is where I'd like to end. I can carry on and on talking about emerging opportunities and newer opportunities for, for uh, startups. But I thought uh, today I would open your mind towards looking at what is happening in the world, what is happening in India, what is happening due to this asteroid-like situation that COVID has created and what is likely to happen in the near future. Nobody has seen future beyond three to four years, but uh, this is where I would like to end. And uh, uh, I would now hand it over to Manojji. Sir, so, uh, there are some questions from students. Would you like sure. to Sure, sure. Uh, uh, Shiddhant Gupta. Come forward with your question. Uh, 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 good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Dr. Chaudhary. Uh, this is Siddhan Gupta here. Uh, first of all, thank you for delivering such a wonderful uh, lecture on you know, new innovations in the COVID times. So uh, my question is on one topic that you had covered during the talk on this one product developed, uh, a COVID attenuation product, am I right? So. Yes. Like you put it in a room and then if two people have COVID, then the other 18 won't get. Yeah. COVID. So uh, take keeping efficiency and, you know, effectiveness aside, uh, what is the extent to which it is currently marketed? Like uh, how many people in the world are actually using this product at this point? Well, actually, it's a startup that I'm mentoring. <clears throat> so I have all the data. Uh, currently, it is just... Uh, launched on Amazon uh, last week and uh, it is being made available to many corporates in the country. So we have originally, these people have originally started in India, but they've already got export business from the Middle East and they're actually uh, starting to sell there. They've just established their complete distribution line and their manufacturing line. So they are pretty much ready to now start to uh, sell in mass volume. So I think all that will happen pretty soon. And uh, as a matter of fact, you can go to uh, Amazon today and pick up one and we'll get the delivery in two days. Okay. Uh, what is the name of the product again, sir? It's called Shaiko Can. Shaiko Can. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Sir, Bhaskar, but Singh, how, you? sir, but how did they test that product? I mean, they should be testing that, right? Like, they really have to put some people who are affected with COVID in between people who don't have, and they have to test it based on that. And how did they do that? I mean, it has been production. tested. Uh, it has been tested in many labs all over the world, and uh, the tests were done in the U.S. Tests were done in Mexico. Tests were done in Europe. And as a matter of fact, it already has what is called the U.S. FDA approval for selling into the United States for. COVID purposes. It also has a CE certificate from Europe to sell there. We also have a certificate from CDSO in the health ministry in India. And as a matter of fact, IIT Guwahati has tested it very thoroughly. Maskar Singhania. Yeah, thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for the wonderful session. You know, in just around 40 minutes, you gave us a broad view around the world, a journey around the world, so to say. And I'm especially delighted to see that you're actually mentoring a lot of startups and you know, investing in them as well. So my question is twofold. First is, sir, uh, uh, what are the kind of opportunities that you foresee in the 
education or the ad tech domain going forward i mean there are buzzwords like personalization gamification and things like that these days so what opportunities that you see uh, there that's number one and so yeah. actually education the biggest challenge that i have seen you see i'm chairman of triple uh, it in naya raipur and it's located in a far out place pretty much like kharagpur so naya raipur is a small little place and it is the whole state has many many rural students who come to study it in this triple it so when we were actually trying to do online delivery of courses the biggest challenge that we faced was connectivity and the biggest challenge that we faced was having a proper device so as a matter of fact uh, today there is an opportunity to create a bigger device than a phone to deliver online uh, education so i think that's the kind of opportunity that i would feel would be very real and and to and needed today okay okay thank you sir so also i belong to satyagarh myself and raipur is a native place as well so yeah i can adhere to what you are speaking about the connectivity and all those issues there it's a huge challenge yeah definitely sir and then second uh i really wanted to know what is the best possible way to reach out to you maybe not now maybe in some time down the line when we have certain ideas and we want some thoughts and insights from you and what's the best way i'm available on I'm, i'm there on facebook and i'm there on linkedin and i'm there on uh, uh, i'm available through my email also so i can share that uh, manoj ji have will have all my details so i can share that with him and it can be circulated to all of you i don't have any issues by anybody calling me talking to me sending me messages etc etc uh, that will be great thanks a lot sir also sir i had another very brief question uh so currently i am also working at a startup which is uh, which is basically in ar vr building ar vr solutions for clients like the virtual showrooms and things like that so i was fascinated when you spoke about crazy and i just had a look up to that as well so was interested in having a snapshot of that so what is it basically if you can just speak about that uh just go online and check out crazy t r e z z i that's the name of the company and uh, they are located in noida in, in close to delhi okay thanks a lot sir i looked that up anybody else any other students would like to ask something ravi ravi kartik go ahead hello sir and uh, i have one more question that is i mean i myself am from electronics department so uh, this uh, field of semiconductors that you were talking about like the chip manufacturing all i have been looking into it and there there were articles why india was not able to produce it from a long time because there were some cost issues uh, the cost required for manufacturing is too high even if we do that there will be our competitors who will be selling that at much lower price and that has been the case and it is still the case i mean we are still stuck in our loop right so uh, why a person who wants to start a business will start such a business which is highly risky i mean at least at the point that we are in well which uh, costs a lot of capital i mean well i have done a lot of research in this area because i advise the semiconductor association and uh, we have created a completely la- uh, new uh, model for what should be done in semiconductors and we have presented it to the government uh as a matter of fact the government has come out with an expression of interest for people to manufacture semiconductors in india so we are looking at two major areas where things can be done uh, where the costs are not likely to be so high uh number one is gan so gan is a technology which will enable which is lot more cheaper than to to set up in the country so gan semiconductor manufacturing will start to happen in an, i would presume in the next two years because there are a lot of people who are interested in gan technology and as a matter of fact indian institute of science is setting up a gan semiconductor manufacturing facility internally as well which has been approved by the government i am part of that committee that approved that and the next area that we have identified is that we should not just look at cutting edge semiconductors we should look at semiconductor requirements that are needed for large number of volume products in india 
and we came to the conclusion by looking at aggregating all these requirements and making sure that none of those imports happen is by saying that we can create a 28 nanometer facility in the country and if we create a 28 nanometer facility you don't need not have a new semiconductor plant it could be an old semiconductor plant which you can bring down here or you could convince one of the companies like Samsung to move that 28 nanometer facility here and utilize that for taking care of aggregating requirements in the country. So there are lots and lots of opportunities there. But outside the semiconductor opportunity, as I said earlier, there is the opportunity to create a large number of fabulous companies in India. And, in, and the government is now coming out with a new fabulous policy, which is going to be very similar to the manufacturing policy, which they've called production linked incentive. So they are going to actually create a production linked incentives policy for uh, fabulous companies. And they are setting aside pro close to a thousand crores for giving incentives to startups to do fabulous companies. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Please go ahead. I think uh, so it student actually have uh, classes in the next hour. Sure, Maybe. sure. Let's let's close here then. So we'll uh, close here. Yeah. So thank you so much. I understand you are heading so many uh, global organizations. So you're so busy. Uh, in spite of your busy schedule, you have uh, kindly found found some time for uh, talking to the students and uh, sharing pulse of wisdoms with them. Uh, you are at the forefront of the technology, emerging technology. So. Uh, getting something from you is uh, invaluable. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, on behalf of all the students and from the core of my heart. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure being here with you. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Sir. sir? Yeah. Sir, I had a doubt on uh, one of the uh, answers to one of the questions in class test three. Yeah, Bolo. Sir, uh, in that uh, uh, 